benefits of deep ripping to ameliorate sandy duplex soils had been demonstrated successfully in Western Australia via a range of GRDC investment projects. But it's vital to know what machinery and practices might work best for your farming system. Well, there you go, mate. We've got very good subsoil moisture there. You can see all through that profile, that's saturated wet. In WA, compaction runs deep, around 350 to 500 millimetres. But whether you deep rip for soil decompaction or for mixing or loosening techniques, it starts with determining the extent of compaction by using a penetrometer to test hard pans. Then choosing the most appropriate machine for your task, setting up the machine properly and using it correctly. Because if you don't go deep enough, your time and investment could be wasted. WA's Department of Primary Industries says more than half of historically applied lime over the last 25 years is still sitting underutilised in the top 100 millimetres of our soil. A good rip is trying to get a fracture between your tines and what they call a fracture lift and drop. So you're trying to fracture the compacted zone, a very slight lift and put it back down without turning the soil over. If it's too dry it's going to come up uh, very cloddy so at that point you've got to accept that you, you've got to wait for some rain. But once you've got moisture at depth, you don't, it doesn't have to be wet on top as long as you've got moisture at depth, you can set the machine up and, and get a very good seed bed. In WA's Midwest, growers embrace deep ripping for fixing hard pans or reducing compaction to let water in, incorporating lime at depth to deal with subsoil acidity and to help non-wetting soil issues. For some growers like Brady Green, it's been a family farming practice for decades. We've deep ripped for generations, so um, I guess it's just evolved uh, as time's gone on and each pass we just create an, a, basically a new growing zone and we moved to this deep ripper three years ago and now we're, we're targeting that 600 mil depth. We're talking 30% on yield, crop nutrition, uh, access to moisture through the drying periods that we experience in the growing season and that all leads to greater yield. It's important to deep rip right, and the experts insist whether you're a first time or long time ripper, it can always be done better, starting with choice of machinery designed for your selected conditions. For Brady, that means starting with the tractor. Well, the tractor's got to be working well, so it, it, you know it's, it's working near our maximum capacity, and so we need the machine slightly higher at the front than the back, and yeah, we're, we're, we're targeting that ripping depth. So we'll test that with a penetrometer. So there's, a, there's a penetrometer going in, and you can see that gauge is going in, in, into the yellow zone. It's actually hit a, hit a bit more of compaction at the bottom of that. We know how long since the paddock was last ripped and then yeah we're trying to make sure that we're getting the, the fracture right across in the 600 mil between the two tines. A lot of people ask how much horsepower required. It's generally speaking we've seen as low as 350 horsepower but here today we've got it just over 500 horsepower. But we find it's more about the balance of the tractor and the right counterweights or if you've got tyres, tyre pressure and correct counterweight is really critical. With the track machines, this one today is a two track machine, some of the four track machines and most of them need additional ballast. So what we've got here today is what we call an active mix time. So this machine is set up to, to dig down to 550, 600 millimetres but also get, uh, mix your lime as well as ripping deep. And if you want to solve your non-wetting soil issues, then you need to go to what we call the clay blades. You put them on the front of your tine, and then what they do, they'll actually bottom to top, pull the clay out from underneath, and then the non-wetting sand falls down, and then the machine mixes it all together, and then out the back you've got um, a seabed that's ready for sowing, and you've, you've taken care of your non-wetting issues in one pass. Canola and lupins are really important at planting depth and if you haven't got the right rollers on the back of your machine you can get very soft and you can't control your planting depth. So wheat's a lot more forgiving with plant depth so you'll always, and that's where you'll get your biggest kick, or what we call a free kick. 
Um, yeah, the, the yield responses are just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. With the crumble roller on the back, it's, it's actually giving us quite a firm surface, so crop establishment is, is a lot easier with this machine than what we've experienced in the past, where we just left it too soft and we had issues. So the twin spiky roll that you see in front of you here, this is for dealing with all the soil and the mixing that we've done with the tines. Because we've moved a lot of soil, we need to actually bring it all back together and then uh, establish a nice seed bed. You can see I've pretty easily got down to 350, 400 there. But to notice here, you can see this dimple effect from the spiky rollers and that's basically the perfect way to leave your finish. So you've got a good seed bed and it's going to let the water infiltrate very well and it's going to spoil the wind so it's good against wind erosion. Deep ripping manufacturers work with grower groups, soil scientists and local agronomists to create designs that achieve the best outcomes for your conditions. Mechanically, your machine will be working at almost 100% capacity, so the grease points need to be greased at least once a day and be prepared to change the oil often. What we found is find a machine that you can tool up or down so that if it's light, medium or heavy country you can still rip it. A lot of people are shy of ripping medium to heavy country but we found excellent results by, by running the soil renovators through that soil type. So yeah, our view on that is rip everything whenever you can. And it seems growers keen to maximise yield potential are ripping every two to three years, especially in WA's northern and eastern grain belt when four to five years had been the expectation. The biggest change we're seeing today is how often you have to rip, what crops you rip before, and where it is in your rotation and how often you have to go back. We're seeing a lot of farmers are going back and going deeper, another 100 mil deeper when they go back because they're getting another free kick. They're going, the yields are jumping again. Do it and do it properly. Mm -hmm.